Welcome to our deep dive today, going deep into the world of American McGee. Yeah, American McGee. You know, the uh, the guy who gave us that twisted take on Alice in Wonderland, American McGee's Alice? Oh, classic. But his career is more than just creepy fairy tales, right? Oh, for sure. It's got this whole history of gaming woven into it, and this journey he takes to kind of become this wicked Walt Disney. It's it's really interesting. And we're going to unpack all of that. And we're going to be starting with his Wikipedia. Okay. Now, you might be thinking Wikipedia, but trust me, you can find some interesting stuff even on a simple page like this, especially with a little guidance. Right. Yeah. Connect the dots. Exactly. So let's start from the beginning. American McGee's early years. I mean, it's like something out of one of his games, really. Eccentric mother, bunch of stepfathers, and then, boom, 16 years old, he's basically abandoned. All he's got is his computer. Wow. So it makes you wonder, you know, if this is where this dark creativity comes from. Yeah, you could draw a straight line to it, for sure. <laughs> I mean, even in the Wikipedia entry here, McGee himself talks about how his upbringing contributed to his uh, darker creative tendencies. Mm. But it's not that simple, is it? No, no, it's definitely more complicated than that. Yeah, you can't just write him off as some troubled kid escaping what? into fantasy. <laughs> I mean, even with that home life, the entry talks about how he was really good at math and science. He even went to a maggot school for computer science. Wow. Yeah, it's a good reminder that, you know, brilliance can come from anywhere, even difficult backgrounds. Absolutely. And then he drops out of high school, takes odd jobs, even fixed up Volkswagens for a while, according to this. Really? Yeah, you can kind of see that independent streak in him from the start. Yeah. Like that that resourcefulness you see in his later career, starting his own studio and all that. Definitely. Okay, so now let's get into that legendary chapter. The old software years. Imagine the 90s. This is like the Wild West of gaming. And old software is right at the center of it all with Doom, Quake. These were more than just games. They were events. Oh, yeah. They were huge. And American McGee just happens to end up right in the middle of it. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. I mean, living in the same building as John Carmack, one of the founders of Build Software. Right. That's not luck. That's fate or something. It's meant to be. He goes from fixing cars to working on these games that basically define a generation. It's an amazing jump. That is quite a jump. Yeah. What gets me, though, is, you know, the Wikipedia entry mostly focuses on on the what listing the game of like Doom Quake that he worked on. But I'm really curious about the how. Yeah, the behind the scenes. Exactly. Yeah, you can only imagine the energy, the creativity that was happening in those rooms. It makes sense that those years had such a big influence on him later. Yeah, those games were intense, violent. Did that plant the seed for those dark, kind of disturbing images he became known for? I mean, do you see a connection there? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's impossible to ignore those stylistic connections. You look at the blood and the gore of doom that's yeah. echoed in his work. Yeah. It's like he took that and created his own visual language from it, you know? Mm. And then in the middle of all this success things change yeah he goes from the top of the gaming world to out the door and this wikipedia entry just kind of glosses over it you know yeah i mentioned something about internal politics and differing design philosophies but it doesn't get into the nitty-gritty right it's so frustrating it's like a missing chapter in an otherwise great story totally I mean, there are hints, like maybe some personality conflicts or creative differences, even some quotes here from people who worked at Ed Software back then, but hmm. it's still a mystery, isn't it? Yeah, what really went down. Exactly. What happened behind those closed doors, and how did it lead him to Alice, his biggest creation? It's like this firing, mysterious as it is, it's like a turning point, you know? Yeah, a catalyst almost. Pushes him to create his own studio, and boom, American McGee's Alice is born. And what a debut, right? It's like he's taking control of the narrative. I don't know, almost like a... A reclaiming. Yeah, yeah. He takes something so innocent, Alice in Wonderland, and puts it through, well, the American McGee filter. Dark. Twisted. Bold move. Definitely bold. And I think that's what makes it work. Think about it. He's out from under the Itatram software umbrella, takes a story everyone knows and injects it with his style. That psychological horror, it was a risk, but it paid off big time. Hugely, critically acclaimed, a commercial success, even sequels, right? And that fan base, dedicated, that says something for a game that goes to such dark places. Oh, for sure. And don't forget, there's been talk of a movie for years. It's true. There's just something about his wonderland that people are drawn to. I think it's that fear of, of losing yourself, the loss of innocence. He just taps into it so well. Yeah, and it's not just shock value. 
there's beauty in it, even though it's grotesque. It's what makes his work interesting, I think. Is that artistry, like finding light in a really dark place. Right. And it became his thing, didn't it? That dark whimsy. Even with Spicy Horse, those other Alice games, mobile games even, it's always there. Yeah, like a through line in his work. You can always tell it's an American McGee creation. But it's funny, the Wikipedia entry doesn't really dig into the Spicy Horse years. Just a couple of sentences about the struggles, the successes. He was putting out a ton of work. Yeah, and it doesn't really get into the whole mobile gaming boom that was mm -hmm. happening. I mean, everybody and their brother was trying to make mobile games back then. It was a wild time. It was. And, you know, it makes his story so relatable. I mean, even if you're not a game designer, it's that struggle of trying to be creative, but also, you know, make a living, find that balance. Yeah. Then the entry talks about Spicy Horse shutting down, projects getting canceled like Alice. Yeah. Asylum. Kind of sad, honestly. Yeah, it is. Like a reminder that even when you're talented, have great ideas, things can still go wrong. That's the game industry, I guess, right? The game industry and, well, life in general, maybe. Yeah, it's like you're staring at that game over screen and you're just waiting for like the continue option to pop up. Right. And in a way, it did. The Wikipedia entry talks about how, I don't know, how his creativity kind of found a new outlet. And it wasn't in another game, but uh, it was actually in the real world. Oh, interesting. Yeah, his wife, Yeni Zhang, she runs this company, Mysterious. Mysterious, okay. Yeah, and they take his art, his characters, and make, like, clothing and accessories and stuff. Oh, that's cool. It is, right? It's like his creation sort of broke free from video games and found a whole new life. It really shows you how powerful those visuals are, those characters. Yeah. But it also says a lot about, you know, McGee himself. That resilience, that ability to adapt and find new ways to create, even when, well, when one door closes or a studio shuts down, I guess, in this case. Yeah, exactly. And it makes that whole quote of his about wanting to be the next Walt Disney only a little more wicked. It makes you see it in a whole new light, doesn't it? I mean, he didn't just make games. He built these worlds and they're dark, but also kind of wondrous, you know, like yeah. this weird mix of childhood fantasy and, uh, well, nightmares. Right. And maybe that's what it takes to be a true visionary, someone who isn't afraid of these darker elements, who can embrace the unsettling stuff and find beauty in it. So it makes you wonder, did American McGee actually pull it off? Did he become that wicked Disney of video games? That's the big question, right? And it goes beyond how many games he sold or what the critics say. It's more about the impact, you know? Mm -hmm. What did his work leave behind? How did it affect the industry, the players? The legacy. Exactly. So if you're listening to this, you got to check out his work for yourself. See the dark side of Wonderland in American McGee's Alice. Explore his other games and then tell me, did he do it? Did he make his mark as this iconic creator? Yeah. What do you think? And I think more importantly, what does it say about us that we're so drawn to these dark, twisted stories? Even when they're a little disturbing, maybe even a little scary, there's something about them that we just can't resist. Something to think about, isn't it? Until next time, happy diving.